lost in a world where my darkness turns into light I know what I want and I'll get it of you by my side Like a candle burning brightly You always seem to know where to find me Straight to the heart when you look into my eyes Chasing stars You always know just where you are Every picture tells another story I wanna be one Shining like the sun I wanna go there with you I wanna burn there with you Oh, shine on, shine on Welcome, Xenia. I'm so happy to have you here. How are you today? Thank you, Catherine. I'm fine. I'm very glad that you invited me uh, in this dialogue with you, so I'm looking forward to it. It's my absolute pleasure. We already did an interview in Serbian language, and I invited you for this one too, because I, I would like my audience to get to know you a little bit better, because I'm truly impressed with what you have uh, uh, um, created in your life. So um, I would like to start a little bit with your story. Uh, yes. You were in show business for a long yes. time, <laughs> and then you did a huge transformation which in your life, and yes. now you are a, a certified psychotherapist. And and how that even happened? Yes, thank you. Um, so let me start with the term uh, dark night of the soul. So uh, Jung was the, the one who gave that term, that sentence, dark night of the soul. So yes, um, my decision to become a psychotherapist and um, psychologist came after a lot of dilemmas that I had in my early 30s, around 35, 36. 
um, until that moment, the entertainment was everything what I wanted. So I was a pop singer with five CDs released and all in fun, music, show business. But if you think about, was that enough for me? Yes, I would tell you. If you asked me, was that enough for you? I would tell you, yes, it was. But life always has its own plan, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so there were a lot of changes in Serbia at the moment. So I realized that somehow the show business and the music is not going um, in direction I would want to see me, right? In that direction. So mm -hmm. it was a very hard period for me. There was a lot of decision to be made in that moment because I realized that I don't want to be part of that show business anymore. Mm -hmm. And uh, truly it was the dark night of the soul because it music is my life, my creativity, my voice was something very important to me. Um, it was, yes, I might say that music is something that I love the most, truly and really. So giving up something that you love the most is always very difficult to decide and especially to do. So yes, around six months of my life, I was in, in a concept of dark night of the soul where everything that I knew um, and that I loved needed to be changed. So, yeah, here we are after six <laughs> months. I was thinking, how can I connect with the people? Because music was the, 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 the channel, right? For my connection with people. And in my life, everything was about the people. I love people. I still love being surrounded by people. I believe so much in people and humanity. And so I was thinking, how can I use my skills, my social skills, my voice? How can I touch people if that is not music anymore? Okay. So that was my main question. And one day, I remember my mother came and she said to me, she, she told me, well, you know, Ksenia, I was thinking, why not psychology? And I was like, come on, mom, psychology, what would I do? And she was like, but you can do whatever you want. If you love people, there is a chance so you can understand the human nature better. And then maybe you will find your ways to connect with people in some other way. So that was it. It was my mother. And that was the beginning of my new story in life. So I finished, um, I have a master's degree in psychology. I'm certified European certificate in psychotherapy, national licensed psychotherapist. And now 12 years, I'm working as a psychotherapist in Serbia, but I have clients all over from all parts of the world. Yeah, that's, that's guys first of all <laughs> she is famous that's that's the deal <laughs> thank, thank you so much <laughs> thank you Catherine yes. she is very humble so I'm going to say that <laughs> thank you so much thank you so much Catherine second of all uh, your voice is like a cure at least for my soul mm -hmm. And um, this is why I feel this deep heart-to-heart -heart soul connection with you and why I invited you. you to my show. Uh, I experienced Dark Night of the Soul myself. And um, after the change of my life and the career and everything, I'm now on my path to do actually what I love. And touching people's hearts is a legacy. And yes. that is exactly what you do. So now we're going to use your brilliance. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, my God. Thank you. Yeah, well, you are a little bit subjective, but thank you for that. Uh, yeah, I yeah, am. I know. <laughs> and, you know, uh, before I told you this, be before we actually, uh, um, like, uh, uh, set up all of this to, to record, um, 
my son is six years old and I was uh, uh, like playing your music uh, <laughs> to him. So we were yeah. dance- dancing and around the apartment and, and yeah, I, I truly enjoy that. Thank but you. we're here for psychology now. Yes. And I would like to help people. And this is my main mission. This is why I invite experts like you here. Um mm-hmm. One of the biggest topics in the world uh, is setting boundaries. And uh, we already recorded an interview in Serbia, and I, I already shared that. Um, we covered this topic, but yes. uh, the way you presented it was brilliant. And I would like, if you would like to share a little bit more, why is that not so simple as it is actually presented? Why it's not just saying no? What is it exactly and how we can learn more about it? Yes. Well, thank you, Catherine. It's a really important topic in um, human functioning in general because um, I don't know why, why is that? Why, why people, when they talk about boundaries, they're talking about the potential to be able to say no, to stop people from invading into your personal space. But I don't know why I see boundaries a little bit different, or my way to describe the importance of boundaries is a little bit different, because boundaries are um, a concept and which presents who we are in the in this world mm-hmm. and how we who we are is presented through our boundaries. So it is not. the the capacity for us to be able to defend ourselves, which is usually the way how people describe and talk about boundaries, but it is not. It is not the only function of of that topic, of that theme. Boundaries are who we are. So I don't like to categorize um, uh, uh, things, but in terms of so we can better understand boundaries. I would love to just mention that boundaries are our psychological space, mm-hmm. um, somatic space, bodily, mm-hmm. emotional space, um, mental space. And our boundaries represents who we are and what we want from our life and or our, all our relationships in our life. Okay? Mm-hmm. So they serve us to live life more easy, more fluid, um, with sort of lightness. And that is the reason why this topic is so important because boundaries are who we are. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. In terms of mental space in terms of boundaries, what would be? Let's give an example. Mm -hmm. Our values, hierarchy of our values, our beliefs. And respect is the term which also represents boundary. And Mm -hmm. And that means, do I want to talk with you about some themes, topics, Mm -hmm. or I, I don't like? Mm -hmm. Do I have to do that or don't? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If I do talk to you in some way about some topics, how far I want you to go and how far I allow myself to go. Mm -hmm. So it's very delicate. It is just one one, uh, example. But if you imagine boundaries on all levels, somatic level, mental level, psychological space, uh, and everything, you will realize how delicate and how important they are. And that's the reason why people are are so obsessed in a way about uh, 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 boundaries and the theme, talking about boundaries. On the other side, we have some, um, we all pr- play our roles as a humans social roles what that means we are some of us are mothers some of us are all of us we are somebody's children right Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so we have the role of being a child to our parent a partner 
a spouse, a parent to our children, right? So all those social roles, they have some um, expectations to be fulfilled, Mm -hmm. right? So it's very hard in this moment in time when everything is, all the changes are very tectonic, very very strong. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, The planet is going through a a transformation. It's very hard for people to uh, handle all those changes, changes and their personalities in optimal way. Mm -hmm. Why I'm using the term optimal? Because there is no ideal. Okay? Mm -hmm. And um, that's the reason why I think uh, the boundaries are so um, hard to fully accept as um, not only potential for saying no, stop, or, you know, because when it comes to boundaries, there is always a package with it and these are emotions a Mm -hmm. lot of emotions Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and when it comes to emotions there's no logic so the common sense is not enough we might know what we need to do but somehow we struggle to do that why because of the emotional energy i call that emotional energy of Of course course. it is not it is not a term Mm -hmm. a, a professional term but i call it so that's the reason why we talk so much about boundaries. Uh, there's a lot of people who are who had a different childhood experiences, and while um, becoming a person persons that they are, they had to go through a lot of adverse experiences, which was not helpful being a stable adult. Right. So Mm -hmm. I'm going a little bit towards psychotherapy, Mm -hmm. but all these factors, what I wanted to say is are influencing and are are the reason why we now need to talk about boundaries in our life in uh, to be able to live a life which is optimal in every sense, Mm -hmm. emotional, psychological and practical way. Right. So it's practically not so simple. No. But uh, when we when we speak from the perspective of you being a public person, yes. and in my world, I, for example, get thousands of messages on LinkedIn and emails, and um, I can't reply to all of that, right? Mm-hmm. I have to say no a lot of times. And yes. this is why I, I learned now, I, I, I learned from you that it is much deeper than, than just that. It's connected to my values. Uh, but a lot of... If I, if I may say experts are connecting setting boundaries with successful people uh, mm-hmm. who have to say no a lot of times and with high achievement. So mm-hmm. how we can actually make a bridge between like uh, knowing how to set boundaries, achieving su- success in the material, but also spiritual mm-hmm. world uh, as, as uh, people, right? Uh, mm-hmm. And, really live the life that is fulfilled and abundant? Um, That is beautifully asked, Catherine, because a lot of people are not in alignment with their core beliefs and values. Mm -hmm. And they don't even know that. So why I'm saying this? Because, Because... Usually people are transforming or changing in terms of personal development in few um, situations in life when it comes to a lot of suffer or pain and they understand that they need to change something. Um, Secondly, when they are inspired by somebody else's story. And the third thing would be when they have a lot of information about something and they want to try, for Mm -hmm, example, mm -hmm, right? mm -hmm. So why I'm saying this? Because what I saw in my practice was the people who were high achievers, okay, uh, would come to therapy because in some point of life, they have done all what they expected from their selves, themselves 
and what others ex expected them to do. But when they achieved that, it was not fulfilling. And the, what was happening, they, they thought that they, that they are a problem. And they would go in what we call in psychotherapy, high functioning anxiety. So they cannot be in peace, they cannot rest, they cannot be in peace with themselves, but always in some another goal, another goal, another achievement, another achievement, which on one side is giving a lot, of course, because there are results, right? And then you can say, okay, well, my work is worthwhile, right? Of everything what I'm doing, because there is a result. But on the other side, some sort of emptiness is there. And that is frust frustrating for them because most of them, they have all what I wanted. They have a, a good life, a stable life, but something is missing and people cannot understand why. If I realized my potentials, if I got what I wanted, why I'm feeling this? And then we come to a very important topic when it's come to human beings is the purpose of life. And you can see a lot of people talking about the purpose because all that we have in materialistic way, someday it will be somebody else's, right? We cannot take that with us. And it's fantastic when you have your results and when you uh, have a beautiful achievements, but it is not enough, Catherine. And then we come to boundaries personal inner boundaries where am i moving toward what do i change my priorities while i'm developing as a person because people don't understand one very important thing being aware of it or not we are changing as persons the the good thing is uh the people who are aware and are supported by working with somebody, they have a um, bigger possibility and percentage of living optimal or satisfied life. But we are changing. Being aware of that or not, we, we change in personality and characteristics. So there can be a bridge between high achievement and inner boundaries is awareness that we have the right to change our life priorities. It is okay if we, I'm just giving an example, Catherine, now. It is okay if we decide one day to say, well, that's it. <laughs> I'm not doing this anymore. It is hard, but it is okay. And most of the time it's happening. Why? Because there is some longing for something which we cannot understand. And that, then we come in that place. Psychotherapists, coaches, different types of people who will support that inner wisdom, um, potential. And those are the moments when people start to realize again who they are, where I want to go, who am I? What will I do now? Because in my 60s or 70s, I'm, I will physically, I will not be able to, to chase my goals the way I'm doing now. But so, okay, I might sound poetic a little bit, but I didn't want it to, to sound poetic, but it's a really something that is happening in my practice, psychotherapeutic practice. And um, what I realized as a psychotherapist that a lot of people, uh, are not even aware that they are not al in alignment with some of their values because life is so um, quick. Changes are so quick, so um, sudden, too much. So people just didn't have time to 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 you know to to be, we we say we had in Serbian the 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 the, the break you know when you pull the break and say, okay, let's see what's going on. And I think that the, all the changes that we lived lately in the last two, three years, uh, people realized 
uh, that something crucially must be changed in 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 functioning so we can really uh truly live fulfilled life because living a fulfilled life for every pre- for every each one of us is different yes but we need to be in alignment with that something which is important for me does not necessarily have to be important for you so that's the reason why i always say that it's very good to do some sort of recapitu- recapitulation of life recap right of mm-hmm. of of life time to time to just ask the questions where do i want to go is that how i want my life to be now can i change something what would i like to change and when we talk about change we talk about boundaries because catherine let me give you a very simple and banal example in my 20s i loved to be touched in communication oh hi how are you yeah good perfect yeah. but with the time somehow that changed and i realized that gentleness and warmth doesn't have to be connected with touch but it took time for me to understand that so we are changing and when i when i'm telling you about that change and that touch what we see is my personal bodily somatic boundary changed right mm-hmm. so it is very simple very plain too plain but uh, i just wanted to give you an example of what boundaries are they represent who we are they are very important and uh, they change they are not a static uh, phenomena because we change and that's the reason why boundaries will always be very important topic because it, it's a it's a dynamic category mm mm-hmm. Okay, it's mm-hmm. not a static category. I don't like to be touched. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe, <laughs> but we don't know what happened in ten years, right? <laughs> All we have is awareness and personal development and personal work that it needs to be done, and time to time to re, um, recap. I don't know if that is the good word, but yes, to, to 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 analyze yourself life in a good way mm-hmm. um in terms of living even more fulfilled life i was, was smiling that- all the time when you were talking because you <laughs> didn't know i i guess you can guess because you are professional but that yeah, was me yeah. yes yes of <laughs> and course at, at one point of my life of course i reached that what but it came too soon i didn't expect that all of it that i have ever dreamed of i will achieve and and then i was in the point like like constructor said and now what <laughs> you know so yeah. this is the moment and it is a very crucial moment and i know that my listeners understand this uh when we start reconnecting with our inner self mm-hmm. when we start connecting with our source and practically work on our personal development mm-hmm. through different kind of sources and ways psychotherapy is one of them spirituality is another oh yes another topic which is one of my favorites and the awareness of who we are where we belong what is our purpose starts to raise on the higher yes. levels so uh, some some authors say there are even seven la- layers of self awareness and awareness of the world around us and practically the change is inevitable but yes, the yes. moment we realize that we are perfect just as we are because it even doesn't exist we are on this planet to live the human experience and we accept ourselves just as we are and start loving the 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 inner self yes. i i'm sure that a lot of people don't even know what are their core values and once we realize what are our core values life becomes simpler yes. because it's simple to say no or yes if something is in alignment with who i am 
it is a yes. My mentor says, if it's not a hell yes, then it's a no. <laughs> very simple. Fantastic. Sounds <laughs> perfect. No. Yeah. Very, very, very nice. simple. And this is what you touched here now, because mm -hmm. what follows up is alignment with the purpose mm -hmm. when we discover it, our personal mission. And at that point, that was serving for me, serving yes. to other people to help them to get where they want to be. And this is why I think that your work is extremely important as a psychotherapist, mm -hmm. because you're doing exactly that. You're connecting with people and helping them to live more fulfilled life. And just you, just like a line of it, right? Yes. Now we touched, we touched the high achievement. And yes. usually in the material world, that means success in material terms. Yes. Um, what I learned as very young is that we can lose material things very like in a day. And um, success doesn't have to be just material representation. It can actually be alignment with who we are and fulfillment and living the fulfilled life with, you know, I am exactly who I am. What do you exactly. think about that? Oh, yes, that sounds perfect to me because you actually just said uh, um something which is so true and how do you recognize that people who are fulfilled maybe not in materialistic way but they live their true um authentic authenticity how mm -hmm. do you recognize them you see them smile they're mm -hmm. most of the time in peace they're tolerant they they are flexible they understand the human nature um they are not um uh, they are not um, um they're not going into co uh, a heavy conversations uh if that is not necessary they will find uh, a way to um, succeed uh, with a lot of options there will not be only one option and i'm going to take that option no matter how mu much it costs right so exactly what you said when we see those people we see um uh, a level of awareness, but uh, some sort of um, serenity mm -hmm. in them, mm -hmm. and uh, and that is exactly what I'm talking about: being in alignment in with our core beliefs and goals, and where we are and who we are in this moment in life, because it is different, uh, Catherine. Uh, when it when we talk about high achievement, we have a young people. Uh, for whom uh, the high achievement is all about uh, high performance. Yes, result. Result, result, yeah. result, 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 which is okay. And it should be that way in that period of life. So, and then we have a people who are in business for years and they understand that they need to be flexible in terms to be able to work to 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 stay in the market to stay in business you need to have some more uh, characteristics or um, um, traits business wise or personal and um, then we have the 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 moment in life where everything is in the right place generally in optimal way because there is no ideal mm -hmm. or it is not. Mm -hmm. And we are talking about those people and not about the young ones, mm -hmm. the, the ones who need only support to be better in performance, right? Because that's, that is important. You need to be good and in what you do, right? To be able to get the result, but it is not the only thing. Mm -hmm. So everything, everything in life has its moment. Okay. Mm -hmm. But when we talk about high achievement and alignment, it doesn't necessarily have to be discrepancy between those two terms, okay? Mm -hmm. um, because I knew a lot, I know, I know a lot of people who had enough awareness about understanding that the personal work is important and they started that very early. And it, the reason for that wasn't some tragic event or some trauma. It was just awareness that 
support is needed. And that personal development, most of the time we do that by ourselves through books, through seminars, through education, sometimes through people. But the self, uh, in my book that I'm writing now, I called that self-correction. Mm. Uh, self-correction is um, makes sense all through, throughout the, the whole life, okay? The life has meaning mm-hmm. through the self-correction all the time mm-hmm. because we will always find a way to adapt to, to certain circumstances, um, situation, whatever, in every aspect of life. So mm-hmm. the self-correction, it might sound a little bit correction, but yes, it's a development, self-correction. Mm-hmm. We are doing something to be better than before, but the reason is not to be a better performance, but better me in my moment in life, in what I want. Exactly. And when I'm better, I can be, for me, I can be better for you. Exactly. That is the main uh, if I understand myself, maybe it's not 100% sure, but maybe that gives me possibility to better understand you. Mm-hmm. And then comes the story about self-acceptance. You said to be able to accept ourselves is a very difficult. It's a, it's a specific another theme in psychotherapy because it is very hard. Mm-hmm. If you don't look like you, you should or you think you should. The self-acceptance is, is another theme for our, maybe some of our future uh, dialogues and conversations because it's in, in, in connection with self-image, which is very important, but totally. <laughs> story. You know, we could talk <laughs> for this. Yes, <laughs> yes, so yes. Now when we touched a little bit of high achievement and, and yes. setting boundaries, um, from one side, how ego plays the role in all of that. And from the other side, um, high level of awareness and consciousness, not just about ourselves, but the world around us, what truly matters in, in our development as a human. And um, does that go along or it's it's like a, a separate thing, like ego from one side and then kindness, generosity from the other side? Because there is a tendency in the world, um, I don't want to label things, but that um, ego is connected from one side to protect us from the outside world. Maybe it's connected with narcissism. And from the other side, generosity and kindness means that you are weak, but actually... I believe the generosity and kindness means that you are a nice human being. Yes, <laughs> so there yes. is a lot of mixture of all yes. of this. If you would like to explain mm-hmm. us a little bit how this is, how this plays out uh, um, in, in the world. Okay. So, Catherine, let me give you my perspective. I can offer you some of my opinion, which, of course, it doesn't necessarily mean that I am right, but we are talking now, so I'm... Since I'm subjective from the yeah, beginning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, would, I would love to, to tell you a little bit about how I think and uh, how I think about it. So, first of all, we need to distinguish term ego, uh, the word ego in um, in um, spiritual field mm-hmm. and in um, psychotherapy and psychology as a science and a psychotherapy as a, a science discipline. Mm-hmm. Okay, it is completely different. So, when you say ego in a spiritual field, it is something, let's say, in, in phenomenological way, something that uh, um, is pr- protecting us. Yes, of course, but it also uh, are, are, is putting us into a Pride, but not in a good way, right? Pride, uh, something uh, protective, something, some, uh, all the negative, let's say all the negative aspects of personality. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, and people will use that word and say, oh, well, she's ego, egoistic, ego. Mm -hmm. Okay. It Mm -hmm. comes from egoistic. But I need to say this because mm-hmm. there is a distinguish a, a distinction between um, ego in terms of psychology. When it, when we talk uh, about ego, we are 
we're talking about the capacity of person to be able to understand um, the outer world and myself into that world. That difference, the ego um, is a capacity for us to have um, potential to have a healthy relationship with the world. Mm. So the term in psychology or psychotherapy, we often say is ego strength. When we say for a client that the ego strength is very low, we say that that is a very label, uh, label, uh, not label, uh, emotionally personality, which is labilna. So then, uh, can you help me maybe with the term in English? Maybe it's weak. Weak. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Weak. But weak in terms inner, of inner dynamic. Mm -hmm. There is mm -hmm. a, not, not enough uh, potential to understand the feelings. There is a, a low potential for emotional literacy, mm -hmm. for um, uh, interpersonal relationship with boundaries on all levels. So the ego in psychology and in psychotherapy and in spiritual world mm. and coaching is, has completely different, in a way, different meaning in terms of diagnostic and how we use the word. By, but I understood you, uh, uh, what you wanted to ask me when it comes to kindness, compassion, empathy, and ego. Uh, when we compare those two things, we must bring into the conversation a personality traits. Mm -hmm. And um, what I learned through my practice is that uh, the person who is capable to accept themselves with their shadow part and the, the positive part, Jung called the shadow part, the part of us that we don't like in ourselves. The person who is capable of understanding that, that we need to allow ourselves for all those parts in ourselves to exist. Acceptance is not approvement of those parts. Acceptance is allowing for those parts to exist because mm. only if you allow for yourself and that part in yourself to exist in you, if you allow that, that which in, in, uh, in final way means to accept, mm -hmm. but to allow, then you come to the position to change yourself. Okay. So that is the biggest frustration that people do how can I accept myself if I'm envying my neighbor having a better car? I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. But it's not about that. It's very human to have all, those, all that uh, fan of emotion, right? Mm -hmm. So allowing yourself to have that emotion with that feeling in you, you are, you are accepting in a way that. And then when you allow that, that you, you are um, creating a base to change that. When you allow yourself that feeling, then you can say, oh, wow, Xenia, I didn't know that you can be envious. Why are you envious? Mm -hmm. What is so frustrating? And then through analysis, through thinking, self-reflection, self Mm -hmm. You can maybe get some answers, but that is the only way. If you are suppressing that because th that is not socially adequate to be, right? It is not the person I want to be. If you suppress it and if you are in denial or you are, you are fighting not to feel that, what you are doing, you are exactly bringing that into your functioning in a higher level than if you would do something like this. This is so, gold. This is this is pure gold. Oh yes. Thank you. <laughs> I think so too. Because and don't forget, I, I I really want to enhance a little bit that that the my English is not 
truly in a high level of so I'm trying to explain in English something that I'm in my tongue language. What I experienced is... what I experienced with you know um, a lot of people who, who whose English is first language. Not, yeah, yeah. yeah. First. They they like to hear us, um, and that's that's very interesting. I was afraid a little bit when I was starting out, but they are aware that we're speaking another language. And uh, they they know that we come from a di different culture and they're very, I'm not generalizing, but very open to receive. So uh, what they told me always was it's important we understand each other. <laughs> so, yeah, that's true. That's true. Well. Thank you, all Catherine. Well. <laughs> yes, thank you so much. Because truly, that was my theme. My personal theme was the self-acceptance. And I really, truly analyzed that so deep, so much, because exactly the example that I gave you, to be envious. Oh, I don't want to be that person. I don't want to feel that. Why do I feel that? How can I feel that? It is not okay. But when you understand that acceptance is not approval, but allowing something to exist, it's complete. It, it's, it, it changed the whole perspective of yourself. And something is changing that. Mm -hmm. And then truly you can go even deeper in that feeling to understand what is going on. Mm -hmm. So this is my personal theme about self-acceptance. Not the envy, uh, but the self-acceptance concept is the concept, hopefully this book will come this year, um, that I truly are, I tried to um, embrace from a different um, perspective, from phenomenological, philosophical, and then psychological way. I can't wait to read that book. Thank you so much, Catherine. <laughs> I, I, I love how we actually uh, slide through all these topics. It's like yes. puzzles coming to the right place. And I'm truly grateful that you that you showed up with me here and, and yes. that you're my guest. Um, but you were a fantastic host and you are a coach. So it's almost like two friends talking about the work they do so thank you so much I, you I'm, so I'm much. truly happy about that you mentioned that you would like to offer a free consultation call and also yes. tell us a little bit about how you work uh, if you would like to yes. work with someone from English spoken field like um, it's I guess it is online and just share a yes, little yes, bit with us. it's online okay. yes uh, I will give you um, Catherine my email address so mm -hmm. they can contact me mm -hmm. um, so I want to um give a free consultation in psychotherapy mm -hmm. and um uh, i do um online work with uh, uh, the whole region uh, and people from all the world mm -hmm. uh, there is there is no um limitation the only thing that is important is for the person to be able to um accept that english is not my first language my mother tongue and that if that is not a uh, um, obstacle, then everything is quite like every other personal work with somebody that you can connect with. So um, I will give my email address to you so you can put uh, Catherine on your profile and they can write to me. And the first one who wants to, to um, contact me, uh, we will do that. We will offer you, you are such. such a pleasure and joy Thank you. to talk Thank to. You. And and I have to say, I was a little bit anxious because <laughs> first time Why? I... <laughs> well, first of all, I, I never recorded an interview in Serbian, which we did before. Ah. So I guess you can you can notice the difference because <laughs> this is like, you know, the field that I'm I'm swimming in much better. And I I enjoyed every single thank moment you, with you. I'm I'm like grateful, and I thank you from the core of my heart. Thank you for being my guest. I truly enjoyed, it and I hope you did too. Thank you so much. It was wonderful to be your guest. Thank you for everything, and I would love to to share with you something. You know, this year I turned fifty. And, uh, really? I'm sorry yes. for the reaction. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. I I'm, I'm 1972. Yes, I'm 50. And, uh, you know, I thought, well, Xenia, for 50 years, you are walking um, through this planet, right? In this life. So it's 
it's time for you to share your voice and some of the little bit of knowledge that I got a little bit and suddenly everything opened, you know, and uh, I'm very happy that I had the opportunity to talk to you and uh, that we share uh, some of uh, our impressions about the personal work in English, but also in Serbian. So thank you, Catherine, so much. Thank you so much. I will just share one sentence. Yes. When I did my first interview, um, the interviewer told me, your life is a movie. So I want to tell you that. <laughs> so I won't be surprised Fantastic. if you record a movie about your life. Too. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Love you and bye-bye. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye.